Aha! There we go. It's a stream. Ah, the front on. <laughs> Thank goodness you're all here. No, that was yesterday. <gasps> oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> I ah, hope you're doing well out there today. It is, uh, yes, there has been a change of hair. <laughs> it's worth a shot, you know. I'll give it a try. <laughs> Went back to the old standards for uh, a spooky a spooky display name this month. <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, I, 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 I will feel more comfortable when it is a little more grown out. But it was time. It was time. <laughs> no, no, no. Every every time every time I go to the the hairdresser, uh, I'm like, can you make it? You know, leave a bit of length, and it always ends up like this. So, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it's fine. Like, if I just... It's alright. <laughs> now, it will be, uh... Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Greetings and farewell from the future, future. <laughs> so yes, that did happen. I had a bit of a hair haircut and, uh... Yeah. <laughs> It's a sort of once every, I don't know, it's like an, it's almost like annual, really. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yes. Uh, so yeah, we finished uh, Tactical Breach Wizards on Monday. So yesterday we played Thank Goodness You're Here, which is certainly a game. No, it was, it was great, but it was... <sighs> We, we, we had a lovely visit to Barnsworth. <laughs> ah, shave two bits. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we went to the lovely scenic village of Barnsworth in North, and it was it was great. It helped everybody out. It was it was it was good. It was fine. <clears throat> <laughs> no, I mean I have had to trim it up because it's occasionally you know, the annoying thing is it just keeps going and they're like ah no, I'm not not prepared for the sort of full on wizard beard yet. <laughs> that is my that is my goal. Uh, like later in life is um oh hold on. Let me let me see if I can find a, a picture of goals. Yeah. But you know that bit at the end of um of uh uh the sword in the stone where Merlin comes back from Bermuda. Like that's <laughs> That's what I'm going for uh, later in life. That's that's where I, where I want to. Oh yeah, there's a good one. Hold on, let me let me. <laughs> yeah, with the Hawaiian shirt. Yeah. Um, is this gonna work? Hold on. Oh no, I need to just I need to. Just... Turn off game capture, turn on monitor capture. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> that's where I <laughs> that's what I'm shooting for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not right now. Gonna take time. <laughs> mm. 
Yes. <laughs> yep. Actually, yeah, that's good. <laughs> Let me just hold on. Uh, zoom enhance. Yep. <laughs> Goals. <laughs> Bermuda. Oh man, it's been ages since I've seen that movie, but <laughs> I still remember that part. Uh, I don't know. Ah, uh, with well, I mean, there's there's ways, Linz. There's ways. <laughs> there's ways to do it, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm packing his library card on holiday. Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no. It has been so long since I've seen that. Or, well. Ah, oh, man. That 2D. Oh, he turns into a. Oh, yeah, the. the what is it? The animal fight with um, Mad Madam Mim. Where. Um, they turn into. <laughs> we should, let me just roll in the TV and we can watch Sword in the Stone instead of uh, instead of the stream today. <laughs> All right, don't feel like streaming today. It rolls in the TV. <laughs> Put that on. No worries. No worries. Get some sleep. Sleep. Yeah. True. I mean, if we do that, I mean, Disney will. <laughs> Disney will will come down on us with the fury of the mouse but eh. ah <laughs> the domain version of king arthur i mean possibly god i'm just trying to think like what is the the status of the various because um <laughs> sleep in heavenly peace I can't sneak an mst3k reference that have passed me i think that's it yeah that's right but what is like the various copyrighted bit like the, there there are there are so many different versions of the King Arthur uh like story and legend that like some part of it is like Disney's gonna have a specific copyright on on something about it, probably. What is it from Sleep? It's gotta be from one of the Christmas like hmm, I don't know. <laughs> From, I know that word. but yeah but also like there's no uh, King Arthur as a story like there's no one definitive version of it real well there, there are so many different versions of it it's kind of like Norse mythology in that way it's like there are there's a lot of different stuff yeah so divorce and source which I think copyright on all of it yeah exactly I mean that's what Disney does when they do something like you know Snow White or um um tinder or, or and well whatever else is based on well yeah little mermaid you know <laughs> they're all based on pre-existing fairy tales or stories or whatever and they're like all right now we're going to change it and copyright the heck out of it muppet's version of everything yeah uh it's it's such it will be forever a shame that you know um the muppet like a Muppet version of something, if they made it now, would not be the Muppet version that I want. <laughs> because, well, for one thing, Disney owns the Muppets now, and the Muppets nowadays are... It's not its not the same. I don't mean to cast, you know, aspersions on any of the people doing the Muppets nowadays. I'm sure they're doing a, a good job. But it's not quite the same. <laughs> like... This needed to be. They need, you needed to make a Muppet version of whatever back in the late '90s when you still had Steve Whitmire. Oh, was it Steve Whitmire doing Kermit? Yes, Steve Whitmire doing Kermit, and Dave Goals was still there as as Gonzo, and like like that. Yeah, yeah. Ever since Disney bought the Muppets, like there's been they made um, oh, the Muppet movie, which I think was okay. Um, but Disney never really seemed to know what to do with the Muppets. <laughs> like, yeah. 
so it's kind of been a bit of a mess ever since then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be interested to go back and look at the... There was the Muppets TV show, which was kind of like The Office. And I wonder if that was just slightly ahead of its time, maybe, because that's... I've seen a few clips from that, and it did look, like, actually kind of funny. <laughs> and I do... I actually really like that angle for the Muppets as, like, a sort of 30 Rock or, like, The Office kind of style of show. Like, that is kind of a modern take on a Muppet show thing, yeah. Oh, The Electric Mayhem. No, I didn't watch that. Oh, no, was it, it was too, too late? Ah, uh, I don't know. It was out of time either way. <laughs> mm. Yeah. But no, I didn't watch the Electric Mayhem one, but it's funny because I saw the trailers for it and I was looking at the trailers and I thought, okay, the Muppets look very Muppety and that looks fine. And by far the biggest problem I had with, with it was the human actors. <laughs> because I don't know how to put it, but a lot of the human actors in Disney product, in Disney Muppet movies, with, with some exceptions, but uh, some of them at least, they often have a problem of being, I'm not going to say not good, but they are very Disney Channel. Like very heightened and very like obviously like act i don't know it doesn't doesn't quite land i don't know if that makes sense but you know <laughs> it's your man, my... oh god yeah i i just saw that video in the discord when i went to post the the announcement and i'm like what is that? i haven't seen that yet but <laughs> So anyway, a Robbie Williams biopic. All right, fine. That's weird already. But there is a... But it has... The role of... Okay, let me let me get this right. Yeah. Let me get this right. I'll need to watch this video at some point. Um, I don't know. I don't want to get... I don't want to get copyright dinged for it. We can all watch it together. Um, yes. Ah, here we are. First trailer for the Robbie Williams biopic, Better Man, starring a CGI monkey as Robbie Williams. Oh, don't you, don't you copyright strike me. Oh my god. Yeah, no, it's literally, it's, <laughs> it's literally just, why, why? <laughs> it's, it's, this is a, it's, it's, what if, monkey. I don't. This, this is just plan. This is just the next Planet of the Apes movie. You can't fool me. <laughs> That's so. <laughs> All right. We've had enough of normal biopics. Not enough of normal biopics. We're gonna get weird with it now. Yeah. So something I wonder about this. I mean, I'm I'm very uh, you know I, I admit that I'm not um, dialed into the music you know popular music scene or whatever. I remember Robbie Williams, but I'm like. It feels to me like his heyday was a long time ago, <laughs> right? Like, I've, I don't know. I don't know. What is the market for this movie? <laughs> I don't know. I guess, but like, biopic, I mean... Do you have... Uh, uh. I mean, I guess so. I'm just like... But my, my point is, like, your heyday is a long time ago, but, like, the, I'm thinking of music biopics, like, actual, like, like serious music biopics that, I've, that I know, like, existed. Like, we've got, had the one, um, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, oh, yes, exactly. This, this is my point. Yeah, Lindsay's got it, yeah. 
Elton John and Queen are still popular. Elvis, like, like they're big names that everybody still knows. I don't know that Robbie Williams is the same. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, that's my impression of of his current status, anyway. But I'm, I'm, I like I said, I don't know if that's accurate. <laughs> Yeah, to some people. Yeah, it's just it's just a weird choice. So it's already a bit like, oh, you know, maybe an odd choice for a for a for a biopic. Oh, the, he's being he's <laughs> it's CGI monkey, <laughs> Planet of the Apes. Yeah, all right. Popular on the oldie stations. Oh, oh, oh. <gasps> Yeah, that makes sense. This <laughs> is just like. Uh, is this going to spawn a trend now of like biopics with a weird replace, like a weird replacement for the um, for the for the the main uh, for for the subject of the of the uh, of the biopic. Like, <laughs> yeah, Andy, Andy Circus must have had a hand in this. I mean, I would, I genuinely, I would not be surprised. He seems to make sure to, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, the monkey's played by the man himself. Oh. Uh, well, Andy Circus's studio will be involved, I'm sure. I don't know. <laughs> He does seem to try and get himself involved in like every like big 3D motion capture thing. Mm. <laughs> right, uh, Taylor Swift biopic, but um, Taylor Swift is played by someone like from the cast of Cats or something. Because I think Taylor Swift was in Cats, was she? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We already have the the model. Yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I didn't see that movie. <laughs> mm. A CGI koala. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's already done a run on the festival circuit. Okay. Interesting. Okay. I mean, just from I, I watched the trailer with the sound off, so I don't get copyrighted, copyright smacked. Um, it did it like it looked like a good trailer. <laughs> um, get out, out! Must be swift as the coursing river. How dare you! Hmm. <laughs> Right. I was just looking at that because I'm like, they're going to go into, surely they're going to go into take that and everything. Because it was like, yeah. Yeah, it was take that from 90 to 95 and then solo since 96. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, biopics like Critic and Industry Award Catnip. Yeah. I feel like it's biopics and movies about movies uh, also are the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, who else are we placed with it was what CGI thing? Yeah. Mm. Yes, content about us. Oh, it's this biopic where they gorilla. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> rocket man replace him with a rocket. Yeah. 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 Hmm. Uh, uh. I just want to see someone do like a uh, like <laughs> the rock played by a rock. Um, I just want to see, like a, some just a biopic, but the they're just played by a cardboard cutout. Like the whole time, it's just a cardboard cutout of, the, of that person, <laughs> whoever it is. Uh, 
<laughs> but he raps about everyone except Rami Malek and Muppets. <laughs> God, yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. The Beatles are just CGI Beatles. Wait, now, now, now. Okay, there are two ways we can go with this. We can have CGI insects or they can be CGI Volkswagens. <laughs> the Beatles, but, a Volk but Volkswagen Beatles. You know, <laughs> both. Yes, they're being driven by beetles. Alternate every scene. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. Let's go. <laughs> mm. Yeah, <laughs> Beast Wars. <laughs> Beetle Beetles. Yeah, Beetle Borgs. Wait a minute. <laughs> Oh God! Are they uh, surely there's there are Beatles biopics? So been animated by a different studio. Yeah. You wouldn't Beatle a ball. <laughs> yes, I would. It's always a funny game of being like you know as well with with mu particularly with musician biopics. It's like what are they going to call it? Which what song lyric? Or usually just what song title is it going to be called? Like Elton John was Rocket Man, um, Queen was Bohemian Rhapsody. This is is Better Man a Robbie Williams song? I assume it is. I don't. I don't know. Um, uh, but there are some very like. <laughs> Uh, very weird ones. Although, oh, it's it's often just like okay, we need we need one that refers to, uh, like, yeah, Better Man or uh, Rocket Man or you know, it's, it's a singular person. Like, just look for the, through their track list until we find a popular one that says like implies something about about them. Uh, and Elvis was just Elvis, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, sports! Sports movies and documentaries are always—they often do play that sort of inspirational um, thing. Yeah, not not unusual. <laughs> yeah, music biopic. War should have killed the entire genre. I mean, I didn't see it, but I know that like the 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 Weird Al biopic was really like a satire making fun of biopics. It wasn't. It wasn't actually, um, it was not actually a biopic of Weird Al in, in any way. <laughs> it was, it was straight up, it was straight up a parody. Yeah. Yeah, and Walk Hard, yes, should have just killed, like. <laughs> but the, the, the thing is, it's just like. I don't know. It just wasn't. It wasn't popular enough. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, if if that movie was, if Walk Hard or the Weird Al biopic were popular enough, it probably would have changed the sort of reaction to music biopics. But they weren't. I don't think. Like, <laughs> it's not. It's not quite this. It's not. Uh, the same as when, like you know, Austin Powers completely re redirected the James Bond franchise because they were like, "Well, they've just exposed us entirely in this massively popular movie," and like, "Well, we can't do that anymore because they'll just make fun of us." And I always got the impression that while War Card was like a funny, you know, a, a good movie, it was just nowhere near popular enough to actually make a dent in the audience for actual music biopics that such that studios went oh no we can't do these anymore everyone's gonna point and laugh at us like no nah. yeah mm. 
but like <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the exact same structure and beats. I mean, yeah. You yeah, have formulae formulaic movies and formulaic stuff. It's formulaic for a reason. It's formulaic because it works. The formula works. Like as much as people you know, as much as you or I might be sick of it or uh whatever, it 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 works. It it works. <laughs> like that's they do it for that way for a reason. And uh yeah. But yeah, you look at them back to back and you're like, this is just the same movie. <laughs> More or less. Uh, but I guess it also t very tangentially related, but like movie and movie trailer stuff. Talking about formulaic and music as well. Uh, I have noticed people pointing out like the, you know, the, the slow pop, slow cover of a pop song is, um, is the like trailer is trailer core at the moment like that's every freaking trailer is a slow cover of a pop song and then sometimes it works but sometimes you're like okay we just can search control f on popular music with the same word in its title um <laughs> like the I, I i watched the trailer for the um john wick ballerina uh, movie and I I I just rolled my eyes so hard because the song was oh, what's the actual song called I do not remember the name of the song but okay, okay. okay hold, on. hold on google it yeah right it's Tiny Dancer by Elton John the only reason it's Tiny Dancer by Elton John is because that song has the lyrics ballerina you must have seen her that's it and they just, that's the only reason that they used it <laughs> that's the only reason they used the song because they're like oh it's got ballerina in it yeah let's go <laughs> it's just so predictable you're like oh the hell Oh, Monkey Man. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. The height. That. Ah, uh, yes. The action movie. Sorry, I thought we were still talking about um, the Robbie Williams movie. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, starring. Yes, starring Dev Patel. Yes, that's right. That is the movie. It's the movie I thought it was. <laughs> Replace people with it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I should. Yeah, I might have to check that one out. There hasn't been a lot that's been exciting to me in sort of like movie terms recently, but that's okay. Doesn't matter. There's plenty of other stuff. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, okay. You know, all right, we got a movie about, you know, ballerina. Okay. Place your bets now. Ah, Tiny Dancer. Ah, yeah, obviously. Um, it's so, it, it, it's every time it's like a major movie trailer, I'm like, okay, okay, which, which pop song is it going to be this time? Like, what, what is it this time? Like, it's going to be, it's going to be something. Nobelgia mm. Action Cinema. Mm. Oh wow. It's all with an iPhone because they couldn't afford cameras anymore. Damn. And it is such a shame the way um yeah. Yes, like break up that, that was that was that was alright, yeah. It's a shame that, you know, uh, the mid-budget movie went away, you know. 
I mean, yeah, iPhone cameras are pretty, pretty okay. They're pretty good, but there is a. I mean, I mean, it's talking about movie filming. You would rather you you would rather use something else. You really would. Um, not just because they're not not bad, but like, no, not good, but like, yeah. But if you if you're in a pinch and you're on a budget, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. And now it's like every movie has got it. Every like you, your movies are now either like the most expensive thing ever made, or they cost, or or they're just basically like in, in guerrilla like indie films with like a shoestring budget. There's nothing in between. There's very little that's in between. <laughs> The gigantic room the phone fits in. It's like, yes, we filmed it on an iPhone. It's like, okay, you were not standing there at the side, you know, going like, uh, going like this. No, there's like a huge <laughs> rig of stuff. Like, what you have is a is a sensor. Like, <laughs> you have a sensor in your hand. And then you've constructed a huge apparatus around it <laughs> to make it into a film camera. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're 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 they're, they're all right. <laughs> it's just like you can't you can't just you you cannot just pick up a, a iPhone and go like this. I mean you can for some for some stuff, yeah. But like, yeah, yes, I know that. Yeah, yeah. If you want to do like a full motion capture, particularly like face capture, a lot of the uh, VTuber software, I don't know if it requires an iPhone in the sense that it won't work otherwise, but I think they are by far the best uh, cameras for that. Yeah, um, they will get you a much better uh, fidelity or wh whatever it is yeah uh, <clears throat> yes the 3d depth detection yeah there's 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 something that does does very very well yeah so yeah it, it pays to have one of those or you know if you have a better camera that you can use you know but most people yeah will use an iPhone because uh, <clears throat> Because it's yeah much more readily available. Mm. Yeah. Man, you see like some of the colossal film rigs they have when you're filming stuff. You're like, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I haven't used an iPhone camera, and I've never had an iPhone, so don't know how exactly how how well it works and how good it is but I have heard you know you hear good things about its image quality mm. <laughs> yeah overkill nature Let me look something up mm. yeah I just, I've, I mean, it's, it's getting increasingly like this with most products, but I've never liked Apple's um, very restrictive uh, ecosystem in general. Um, yeah, <laughs> so I've always used Android phone um, because, you know, you can do, <clears throat> you can do more things that way. Um, yeah, I don't want an iPhone to you. Like the only, pretty much the only reason I would get an iPhone would be for like <laughs> to become like a VTuber or something, you know, <laughs> or uh, to to use it for something like that. Um, but then, like, yeah, oh Samsung, yeah, yeah. That's the thing. That's that's what's going to happen. 
now, at least for the next few years, is all the cameras are going to come with some sort of AI bullshit. Um, like, you know, a AI upscale the image so that you, you have a digital zoom that is now is actually like an AI upscale or something, um, which is going to be terrible. <laughs> Yeah. I didn't see the word, pictures of the moon. I missed that. Hmm. Right, what's the... What are the stats of things? Hmm. So it's a dual camera system for the... This is for the iPhone 14. I'm looking up the stats. Oh, it replaced any picture of the moon you took with a star for... Why? <laughs> Why did they do that? That's so stupid. What the hell? Oh my god. Alright, what would you get? So, okay. Uh, dual camera system. There are two 12 megapixel cameras in the iPhone 14. Main, which is 26mm f1.5 aperture lens. Uh, okay. And then another one, which is 12 MP ultra wide, 13 mil f 2.4, 120 degree field of view, two times optical zoom out, digital zoom up to 5%. All right, digital zoom is bad. Digital zoom is so stupid. Uh, I love some of this stuff that just sounds, I don't know, this, this is on their website. Some of it sounds, I don't know, made up, or at least this is just, um, this isn't going to mean anything to mostly anybody. And some of it sounds like it's straight out of um, Star Trek, because like sapphire crystal lens cover, true tone flash, photonic engine. What the? F <laughs> what is deep fusion? What are you talking about? Smart HDR four. Okay, okay. At least I know what that is. Uh, portrait mode with focus and depth control. Okay. Portrait lighting with six effects, night mode, panorama up to 63 megapixels, very nice. Photographic styles, sure. Wide color capture for photos and live photos. Lens correction, okay, that, that's useful. Advanced red eye correction, sure. Yeah, auto image stabilization, yeah, burst mode. Uh, photo geotagging. Uh, blast processing, no, it doesn't, it doesn't say that. No, it captures HEIF and JPEG, right? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I want the fucking photonic engine and deep fusion is supposed to mean. Yeah, does it have mode 7? <laughs> Featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series and Knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, hold on. What is okay? What is photonic engine supposed to be? I I know I'm sure it actually is something that does stuff. <laughs> I like the from How to Geek. It's like Apple debuted the with the iPhone 14, an impressive sounding new photography feature called photonic engine. Here's what it does. It's like ah uh, yeah, yes it is impressive sounding. Uh, computational okay. Computational photography, the use of algorithms and software to aid in the capture of better photos through tiny cameras. Oh, uh, it enhances the photos taken in mid to low lighting conditions. Okay. All right. So it's an al it, it's it's yeah it's software to in to make uh, low light photos better. Okay, sure. Uh, and deep uh, yeah yeah yeah. Okay, and I was like, Deep Fusion, nine photos. Oh, okay, Deep Fusion is just image stacking. Okay, that's fine. That's normal enough. Image stacking being where you um, take, you essentially take photos at various, well, I don't know if it's, for this one, it's at various um, uh, exposure levels and then amalgamates the data into a single image. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's how you. It's it's also how you do, or something similar is how you do a lot of astrophotography, uh, where you cannot expose the picture for too long because everything moves. 
but if you take a number of different like you, you take a lot of different images of the same thing and short exposures and then stack them together combine the data and do all the stuff yeah yeah okay all right so it is actually something useful <laughs> but it's all software stuff yeah fancier bracketing yeah but kind of yeah mm. yeah <laughs> yeah mm. I wonder what the first phone that can export camera raw files is gonna exist <laughs> Or well, probably already does. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure, uh, as soon as I said it, I'm like, wait, I'm sure this already exists. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Oh, and there's also the video camera, right? Yeah, because they've got like four cameras on the back. Mm. Yeah, that is the thing. If you are doing like serious photography, generally it's you want to have. Yeah, most people, it won't matter for most people, but camera raw is uh, really good. You know, you you want that because that gives you much more control over the um, over the image. When you want to, uh, when you want to edit it or um, you know adjust it and and whatnot. Also, I mean, one of the things that you know something that annoys, something that pisses me off, annoys me is when people like talking about images like, oh, that's heavily edited. It's like every photo you've ever seen <laughs> it is like that. Yeah. Cinema ProRes, whatever for video. Oh yeah, absurd files. Yeah, anytime you take like raw, essentially like raw data, I mean it's what it is. It's uncompressed, it's like all the data. A JPEG and an MP4 are compressed. They are like, I don't know all the specifics, but essentially, you know, they are uh the raw data packaged down into a manageable file size, more or less. Um they are compressed for formats. They have some amount of loss in them, but uh, a camera raw image or like a raw video file isn't and is massive as a result. <laughs> yeah, particularly if you're, you know, the, obviously the bigger recording you're doing, like record at 720 or record at 1080 or record at 4K, and it's going to be enormous. There was something, what are there? Yeah. Like there was something about the, um, oh God, I was I forget where I was reading, but I was reading something about like someone asking a question of like, what, what, how much space does like, you know, how much, uh, how big are the files from on like a movie set? Right. <laughs> um like how much how many gigabytes or or terabytes of data are you generating on a movie set if you're filming digitally and like you know, some absurd number of like i don't know several gigabytes for a minute or some something like that so uh it it balloons up really quickly particularly if you're using big big fancy rigs yeah. Apple introduced ProRes at the same time as their one terabyte phones. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It basically, like, filming, yeah. Filming movies is kind of like that. It's like, it costs 10,000 megabytes to film this shot for 10 seconds. Who touched my camera? Who touched Sasha? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, that was true when it was filmed like actual film film and it's even more true now if you use film because it's much more expensive 
because uh, it's less common, but it's still true that like, oh god, this is costing us so much every second we open the thing. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, switch story device in like 15 minutes. Well, The Hobbit. Yeah. The footage was measured in yards and miles. Well, why do you think it's called... That's why it's called footage. <laughs> like... <laughs> this is a number of feet of film. Anyway. But yeah, The Hobbit was like... Yeah, Hobbit was 48 FPS. Like, you had to switch story... I'm not surprised because... Um, when did that movie come out? Hobbit film series. Okay, 2012 to 2014, those three movies. Um, and so, yeah, they were really pushing the, the sort of boundaries of like trying to do 48 FPS, all digital. Yeah, it was an earlier all digital movie, 48 FPS. Uh, like, I don't know if they're probably 4K or, or something like that. Um, and yeah, the, the, the stor storage technology was not quite keeping up with them. So it's like, okay, uh, to switch it out, switch it out. Cause we keep filling up all these hard drives. Uh, and just imagine somebody on the set with like a wheelbarrow, like full of, full of hard drives. <laughs> it's like more reload. <laughs> <laughs> ah right yeah yeah six or eight and then it would have been cut down for lower yeah right yeah they always work at higher resolution and then cut it down oh yes that um matt parker video about film yeah that's a good one yeah that's a good one yeah it's good stuff but yeah no yeah Will Smith's ruined high frame rate. Really? Is that what is that what is that what killed uh, high frame rate movie making? Was, was it Gemini Man? Well, if it was, that's at least one good thing that movie did. <laughs> no, but it's a quip. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, it it hasn't taken off because it looks horrible. <laughs> like, I think most movies are still. What is it like? Or is it too expensive? Uh, yeah, no. Like, high... Uh, 60 F... I don't know. Yeah. It's so funny because, uh, like, a high frame rate is usually better for... Um, is good for games. You know? Yeah, high frame, 100 years of Hollywood trickery doesn't work anymore. Yep. Um, like, but yes, bigger number must be better, right? Oh god, have you ever seen videos of people like if you try to search for a movie scene on on YouTube, and you the only one you can find is like 4K 60 FPS, and it looks like dog shit. <laughs> it's awful. It always makes you want to throw like it's horrible particularly if it's animated if it's animation as well i'm like oh my god you can't just interlace footage that already exists you cannot do that it looks horrendous yeah games are played on cinema screen that's the thing like high frame rate works on games because they're on a small screen and you know whatever but on a massive screen it just doesn't i don't know well, it's it's also like on a massive screen with real people. That's when it looks terrible. <laughs> like, it's particularly watching like people move around in like high frame rate just doesn't look good. Yeah, yeah, they're not the same. But you you know, it's like. John uh, Deadlock is not a real people. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But like, ah, oh, no, this movie's got to be in 4K 60 FPS. And like, please shut up. <laughs> I'm begging you to shut up. Uh, 
definitely there's a sub subsection of commenters who will equate high frame rate equals better and it's like particularly with animation when they comment on like you know oh this animation is so choppy it's like please please stop it <laughs> please just uh... <laughs> yeah exactly soap opera effect people use soap operas on tv at 50 60 fps so yeah, that frame rate with low qual quality drama and sports and yeah, very I've also found like maybe it was because it was filmed on GoPros, but particularly the scene in The Hobbit where uh, they go down the barrel, which looks terrible. They go down the river in the barrel, which I think that was the 48 FPS scene. I think it was. But there's something about like once you up the frame rate like like that, it didn't make me think, you know, oh, this looks like a soap opera or this looks like, you know, sports. It was like this looks fake. Like this, oh, now I'm very keenly aware that I'm looking at people in the costume, people in costume on a set. Like that's something I think high frame rate does for some reason, for some psychological reason. It's like, oh, this, this immediately takes you out of it. You're immediately like aware of like, oh, these are the actors on a set and that's not real. And like, that's not real. <laughs> It just it completely breaks. Yeah, and the 3D as well. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Now the Hobbit films were such a mess, such a mess of stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the thing with sports. It's like yeah, there are real people kicking a ball around. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Comparing the kind of filmmaking that the original, or that the Lord of the Rings trilogy did, to the Hobbit, and you're just like, oh, what happened here? What happened here? <laughs> there was never any moment in Lord of the Rings, in all three movies, where I was, where I became aware that I was looking at people on a set. Like, <laughs> I, it never, it never happened once, and it happened all the time in the Hobbit movies. You're like, oh god. Hmm. Yeah, high frame rate for CG makes a bit more sense. Well, again, it's that, it's the thing, you know. <clears throat> it's the thing with high frame rate makes it can make it makes I don't know maybe it makes things look more real. Which is actually a problem for film because then you're like, oh, they're just cosplaying. But with CG, you know, it makes it look more convincing. I don't know. There's, there's something. Maybe there's something to that. Maybe not. Who knows? Oh. What I remember from. Oh, how it's from the back playing, being played by children. Yes, that is noticeable. That is, that is definitely noticeable. Um, yeah, particularly in the last scene of well, in the the where they all get where they get on the boat to go to the Grey Havens in um, in uh, Return of the King, <laughs> like kid like Bilbo in particular, They're like oh no, <laughs> that doesn't quite work. But that's not that that's that's because they decided to do it, you know, with the children. But there are plenty of other times where, it, where like the things about those movies, that there are things that should be breaking my immersion, like, <laughs> like the fact that um, you know Gandalf is like twice the size of um, Bilbo and is sitting in his tiny house, taking up so much space, like. It's only <laughs> my brain should should be going. Wait, this doesn't make sense. He's interacting. He's just he's just taking the stick from him. He's just giving him a cup of tea. But he's just go. Yep, yep. Bilbo is like three feet tall. This makes sense. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's so good, man. Sure, he comes through the door. Yeah, man. <laughs> You just don't question it, and then you only afterwards you're like, wait, how did that, huh? And a lot of it's in camera trickery. Like the, I know the scene where Frodo and 
Gandalf are on the um, they're on Gandalf's cart where he's coming into to Hobbiton, and they're sat talking to each other. Um, I think, if I remember correctly, that's an all in camera shot where no one is superimposed. the The set is built so that the front, like the the, the cart, is actually like like a massive like shape like this. So like. <laughs> Frodo is at, Elijah is just really far behind, uh, <laughs> far behind uh, Ian McKellen, but they st but they but it works because it, they look like they're looking at each other. It's movie magic. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, man. It has been too long since I've watched Lord of the Rings. I've seen it many times, but oh man. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Oh man, they are some of the some of the best movies. So good. Mm. Yeah, it's ah, yeah. They're great. They're really, they're really really good. Yeah, it's it is. Um, yeah, it's one of those it's those rare movies where everything, ev like everything, works. <laughs> mm, yeah, and there was so much put into it, and it's so interesting because one of the things I think that indicates that to me is how not just how much of a legacy it has. But how uh, formative and pivotal it was for the cast, because they are st they're still like, I don't know, what are we at? Like over 20 years later for the first one, like still close and still, um, at least to some of them, you know, the main cast, like it clearly meant so much to all of them. And it's still, you know, formed lifelong friendships and um it still means a lot to them and it's like yeah okay this doesn't happen with every movie <laughs> if I can, this didn't even happen with star wars to well it did a bit i suppose <laughs> but like <laughs> yeah ah there we go yeah 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 there's a false perspective yes yeah and it's not actually not as far away as i thought so, you know, that's that still works for an act. You know, you can still act that way. Yeah, they filmed, uh, as far as I know, they filmed the Lord of the Rings movies back to back to back. So it was like three years, maybe over three years uh, for um, for the trilogy. And they were all, you know, they're in New Zealand for like, oh man. Yeah. So I've said before, by the way, that I've said before that one of my like, I don't know, uh, think of a better term than guilty pleasure, but sort of guilty pleasure. YouTube um, <clears throat> watching is sometimes like react videos of people reacting to movies, um, but particularly I do like watching the people's reactions to Lord of the Rings because uh, because of how good they are and because it always get it gets them every time. Like whenever you <laughs> you go to watch like someone w watching Return of the King for the first time, you're like, okay, yep, this this is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was uh yeah <laughs> yeah it what it, they they still hold up and it's so funny because sometimes you're like wow wait this was made in like 20 years ago it's like yeah and it still looks amazing <laughs> for you know for very good reason mostly why I, I see a lot of people being surprised about nowadays is how much of it is like how much of it is practical? There's, and don't, there's a lot of CG. There is there, not well, maybe not a lot, but there's quite a bit of CG, um, which has held up fairly well in some parts. Um, um, but a lot of it is like so much more of Lord of the Rings is practical than you might think it is, like Minas Tirith. Minas Tirith is a miniature. I mean, it's a very big miniature, but it's a miniature. Mm. Yeah, let me 
me see if I can find. Yep. Yeah, bigotry, yes. <laughs> Try and find a good image of it that shows how shows how big it is. I mean, you could play a war you could play a war game on it, yeah. Um let me yeah, here we go. That's I found a couple of images that should uh, that should show this. Hold on a sec. Yeah, here we go. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, you could, yeah, yeah, you could play a, 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 a war game on this. Sure. <laughs> like, like, the different sizes of ones of a different, you know, thing, like this one. And like, this one. Like, <laughs> yeah. So this is this is a mini, as 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 <clears throat> would be called. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. And he's like, not being nominated for Gollum. Yeah, he should. It definitely should have been. I mean, Lord of the Rings got nominated for a billion Oscars anyway. Why, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but so much of stuff like that was, um, <clears throat> yeah, because it was performance capture and it was, you know, it was a new thing at the time. Um, but yeah, um, so much of Lord of the Rings was practical, like miniatures and um, orcs being like extras. The, I think the, the joke was if you're like... Um, <laughs> an adult male around if you were an adult male in New Zealand in like 1999 or you know <laughs> or 2000 um you know you were in the Lord of the Rings like they they pulled up like everybody <laughs> like okay put on a helmet go stand over there you're an orc <laughs> you know <laughs> they pulled in so many people to be extras to sit in the in makeup chair put on orc makeup and just, just go stand over there like particularly for um, particularly for uh, like Helm, the Battle of Helm's Deep, <laughs> has so many extras. <laughs> yes, most of the Rohan soldiers being played by women because they need trained horse riders, uh, <laughs> which is very very funny, yeah, very appropriate for the, <laughs> for um, for Eowyn, Eowyn's story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mmm, Lord of the Rings RPG. It's interesting, because as much as Lord of the Rings has a very deep and rich world, it's also a very, it is a very singular, specific story. Um, and a lot of the things in there are, like, built to reflect that. So if you were to, you know, <clears throat> tell Lord of the, a Lord of the Rings TTRPG that ignores that, I don't know. I don't know, I, I think, you know, this discussion's come up many times before, but, yeah. But no, oh man, yeah, no, it, it, ah, yes. I guess the yeah, inverse of Star Wars RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars is RPG, you can just do whatever you like. Yeah. Yeah, it, feel, I don't know, it feels odd to RP in it because it is a very, yeah, hmm, yeah. <laughs> My new trilogy, oh no, oh the fan fiction, yeah, but no, God, yes. Oh. It's kind of amazing that the movies, like, existed at all, like, thinking about how much work it was like thinking about how much of a risk it was as well because it was P peter what like what had peter jackson done before like he was mostly like making horror movies i think like <laughs> yeah 
yeah, <laughs> Lord of the Rings ends with, and the evil was defeated forever. Yeah, and that's the kind of story that Tolkien wanted to tell, you know. Um, hmm. Yeah. What is he doing? Yeah, like, Heavenly... Oh no, those are his awards. Where's his, where's his film, film, filmography? Bad Taste of Brain Dead. Yeah, he's making horror movies. Uh, filmography. Here we go. Uh, yes. Yeah, Bad Taste, Meet the Feebles, Brain Dead, Heavenly Creatures, The Frighteners, and then Lord of the Rings. Well, that's what he's doing now. Yeah, I mean, that's what he was doing beforehand. Hmm. Yeah, so it was like, yeah, we'll get this guy <laughs> who's a really out there pick to do the movies. And, oh man, yeah, and this was, yeah, like, how did this happen? <laughs> we picked, you know, really out there director and we're going to finance this massive budget and we're going to go out and film in New Zealand for three years and we're going to build all of these models and it's like, <laughs> this should not have, <laughs> it shouldn't have worked, but it did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man. Yeah, it's just. Uh. And the genre directors was in vogue at the time. Mm. I wonder. I wonder. Hold on. Makes me wonder who else was in contention. Like, yeah, how did, how did Peter Jackson become director and, <laughs> ah, I was just doing a, a, a cursory Google actually seems to indicate that he had the rights. He acquired the rights from producer Saul uh, Zaints and made a deal with Miramax. According to a cursory Google. I might be wrong about that. Um, so actually he had the rights to it. Mm. And he pitched it and planned it and was like, yeah, I want to do this. All right. Hmm. Alright, I was just wondering, like, what, you know, were, were they considering other directors at the time? I couldn't find anything about that, but, yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Mm. But yeah. I'm wondering when, like, you know... I, I do think about things of like, you know, the, the, are they ever going to do a another version of Lord of the Rings? Because I know they've done, they've done um, Rings of Power, a TV series, and there was like, I don't know, some Gollum project that Andy Serkis keeps trying to get off the ground. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, the anime. Yes, I did, I did see that was a thing. But like... There are some movies, there are some, particularly in movie world, there are some movies that you get the sense that no one is going to, to remake them. Yeah. Oh, are they doing a new trilogy? Hmm. Wait, a new, new, a new trilogy, like, in, like, as in a remake? Or like a new trilogy, like a sequel trilogy? Because I feel like I've heard about this, but I don't remember what it, what they're doing. Prequels. Okay. Oh no. All of this has happened before. All this will happen again. I mean, it could be Silmarillion. I mean, that's what I think that's what Rings of Power is doing. And yeah, and we did The Hobbit. And I, oh. Uh, no endings, only beginnings on the Wheel of Time. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, that is part of the thing. Like, what we. I, uh, 
wouldn't work. It would be even sillier to try and do a uh, uh, a sequel to Lord of the Rings. I think. Like, I really think it would be. Yeah, somehow Sauron returns. No, no. You see, that's the plot of Lord of the Rings. The plot of Lord of the Rings is somehow Sauron returned. <laughs> that's Lord of the Rings, and we dealt with that. <laughs> we dealt with that. <laughs> Fix that. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't seen any of Rings of Power. I haven't. I haven't watched it. Yeah. Um, I I know the sort of like online reaction to it for season one was not great, but there was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of nonsense around that as well. So I was aware, like, okay. Maybe it's not amazing, but there's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, what's the word? How, how do you put it? <sighs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of the sort of anti-woke crowd getting mad about it and like, oh God, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's it, whenever that happens, whenever there's sort of there's this sort of maybe it's not amazing, but there's also all of that. You're like, oh god, okay, trying to sift through what is good faith criticism or what is just people being mad because they saw, you know, they saw a woman or a black person and they're like, ooh, so like, oh, it's just, what, you know, <laughs> which of these criticisms can I take in good faith? And um, yeah. And then always come down on like, well, you know, if I'm really interested in figuring that out, I can just watch it myself <laughs> and make my own mind up, you know? Yeah. I do try to. Sometimes it slips through, you know? That's the thing. I try. I, I don't go looking for it, but sometimes it slips through because it's just the nature of things. Usually, if something makes a big, someone or something a big enough uh, fuss is made about it, and you're like, oh, you know, it finds its way through. <laughs> particularly if you're searching on you, particularly when you go on YouTube and then it's like recommended videos, like the Lord of the Rings is woke now. Like, oh. <laughs> you know. Trixy discourses. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you see enough, you know, thumbnails with big red arrows pointing at someone from Rings of Power and like, you know. Um Yeah, no, it's, it's stupid. <sighs> Yeah, so I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will check it out at some point. I never did. I I was never. I never read the Silmarillion. I did read Lord of the Rings and I read The Hobbit. Never read. Um, uh, never read. Um, Silmarillion, but man, yeah. The Hobbit, yeah. <laughs> But those those books are oh man actually do I still have this? Uh, I might somewhere. Hmm. I'm trying to remember where, where I put my copy of The Hobbit. Be in the bookshelf somewhere. <laughs> Can't expect me to make sense of that bookshelf. Well, the Silmarillion is not a novel. It's not a story. It is um, is a Wikipedia. <laughs> it's it's a ye old Wikipedia, is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's part of why I never read it because I'm like, oh, I'm you know not so interested. It's it's my yeah my world building document. Yeah, <laughs> it's not really put together in in a story in quite the same way. So. It's a lot harder to read, a lot drier. Mm. Okay. 
I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna, go look for, I'm gonna keep the mic on. I'm just gonna go to the break screen uh, while I do that. I'm go shuffling through all my stuff. Hold on. I'm still here. I'm still here. I swear. It's in here somewhere. Okay, give me like a couple of minutes. I'll be right back. I'm not sure where it is. <laughs> I'm not sure where a copy of The Hobbit is. I did shuffle things around a while ago. It's somewhere. It's here somewhere. <laughs> Never mind. I don't think I'm turning everything upside down right now. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah. But it was a, it's an old one um, with a sort of very old 
uh, paper cover that had um, like I think the cover was a Tolkien illustration that he did himself. <clears throat> oh, good. It's not over here, is it? Funny. No, didn't think so. Didn't think so. Anyway, yes. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, I remember reading that one. I remember. I remember. I read the. Um, I read Lord of the Rings actually after seeing the first movie. I was like, I gotta read the the <laughs> read the rest of the book. Before seeing the second and third ones. <laughs> yeah. That was... Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Try to do this. <laughs> cut down a tree. Yeah, hell is like, no. Can't talk, can't cut down a tree. <laughs> Um, yeah. <sighs> oh, excuse me, I'll say, but yeah. No. So, you know, maybe, maybe I'll put Rings of Power on my, on my list of things to watch, but, uh, that's okay. But yeah, it definitely seems like right now, like, we're trying to, you know, with, Still try and squeeze some franchise juice out of Lord of the Rings, you know. I mean, that's kind of what Lord. Of, uh, that's kind of what Rings of Power is, anyway. So, you know, we're gonna. Um, we haven't fully monetized this yet. Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Hmm. Yeah, but no, the amount of, God, it's funny thinking about, you know, Lord of the Rings being such, well, I was going to say being such a foundational book of fantasy. It's like, no, it is, certainly if you're talking about modern fantasy, it is the foundational book. It is the most, like Western fantasy, it is the book. <laughs> you can divide... You can divide fantasy, like Western fantasy, into before and after Tolkien, like BT and AT. <laughs> like, it is, it is the book. Um, like incredibly influential, and the um, the movies as well are maybe not. I don't know to the same level, but are also a super influential thing like they really yeah they really redefined blockbuster movies and and the movie industry at the time which was that for eastern europe mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know you know i mean lord of the rings reaches very far but i don't know how far <laughs> When was like? Hmm. God, listen to it. Like, written in stages between 1937 and 1949, The Lord of the Rings is one of the best selling books ever written with over 150 million copies. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, 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 that's a lot. That's a lot of books. <laughs> that's a lot of books. Mm. It's been repro Oh yeah, I was looking for like the translations. Yeah, it's been translated into at least thirty-eight languages. Good grief! That's a lot. It's a lot of languages. <laughs> mm. Translated for Legends of Condor Heroes and Sis, it's a contender for China. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. When when Tolkien wrote The Hobbit, The Hobbit was a a, a children's story. I mean, as in literally, he wrote it for his his children, for his son. 
and I think it was the Hobbit where they have, it has the story of like it's like oh but father you said uh, yesterday you said said I don't know what it was I'm gonna get this wrong but the idea being you said that Bilbo's hat was blue and today you said it was red and he gets up and damn the boy and right starts writing it down <laughs> yeah uh, we're making Tolkien the first dungeon master <laughs> because oh man play <laughs> we've all had that experience like damn it I knew I should have written that down <laughs> yeah <laughs> The one person who always pays attention, you're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's been, it was, you know, supremely influential um, in so many ways. And then in movies as well. It's like, man, to have that kind of, yeah, it's, it's such a unique work in that way where it's been, it, it's influence. It was released in what was it? It was yeah, publication publication uh, from publication from nineteen fifty four for fellowship and two thousand nineteen fifty five. Um, and now we are almost. In fact, no, we are. We're seventy years later. Seventy years later. Still talking about it. Yeah, I think there was a there's a quote from Terry Pratchett where he describes um, Lord of the Rings as the sort of uh, Mount Fuji of uh, Western fantasy. Um, being that you know, in a lot of Japanese art, traditional Japanese art, Mount Fuji is present in a lot of it, um, and so you know, <laughs> Lord of the Rings. If you are, if it's um, yeah, let me let me find the actual quote. Hold on. Let me find it. Yes, here we go. Let's have a look. Yeah, you. Yes, here we are. J.R.R. Tolkien has become a sort of mountain, appearing in all subsequent fantasy in the way that Mount Fuji appears so often in Japanese prints. Sometimes it's big and up close. Sometimes it's a shape on the horizon. Sometimes it's not there at all, which means that the artist has either has made a deliberate decision against the mountain, which is interesting in itself, or is in fact standing on Mount Fuji, <laughs> which is like, yeah. Yep. <clears throat> that is yeah <laughs> very true but what's incredible about Lord of the Rings particularly the movies as well is that being so influential often there's a problem with influential media where they invent a lot of the tropes they do a lot of they do a lot of things first that then everybody else copies and so when you go back and watch the original it doesn't land because you've seen it all before it's you know TV tropes calls that the uh, you know Seinfeld is unfunny exactly, but that doesn't really happen to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> that doesn't. I, people watching Lord of the Rings today are still like this is amazing, <laughs> like not like I haven't seen this before, or or sorry I've seen this many many times. It's like no this this still is incredible. <laughs> it doesn't suffer from that or at least it doesn't suffer from that as much as some other things <sighs> and what I think maybe largely in part because a lot of what it invented and what was taken away from it I don't know is this is this accurate this is just a thought that popped into my brain then I'm gonna say it and then I'm gonna examine it um, but a lot of, maybe, a lot of the things that actually make Lord of the Rings good is not what everyone took away from it. <laughs> like, what the tropes that it invented, the things that it, um, you know, that everybody else copied is not that actually what makes it good. <laughs> um, like the, you know, it basically copy the aesthetics um of the you know elves and dwarves and men and orcs and um pastoral fantasy you know and um uh big sweeping evils and things like that it's like 
yes, that's all there, and that's all very good, but that's not what makes Lord of the Rings work. That's what, not what um, really makes it shine as a story. So, yeah, I think maybe that's maybe that's why. It's like, yeah, it has all this stuff that we're familiar with, you know, um, elves and dwarves and, and whatnot, and uh, all this other sort of fantasy tropes, but nobody really copied the same kind of storytelling that Tolkien did. So maybe that's why. I don't know. Just at a guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, the heart of the, it, it's, it's the heart of the movie is not, <laughs> it's not any of the tropes that, you know, people have taken from it after the fact. So yeah, or the, or the book or, or whatever. Yeah. Ah, there's a little bit of oh, it's cold coffee in there. Excuse me one second. Oh, oh dear. Hot. It's so hot. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Hey, 41 months. Thank you with the, the prime. Prime. That's just prime. <laughs> I wonder if I can set that up. So <laughs> I need to get I get a clip of, um, of Optimus Primal saying, well, that's just prime. And, uh, and... <laughs> Set that up as a sound alert for Prime subs. I don't know. Because that's what goes through my head every time there's a Prime sub. <laughs> uh. Uh, yeah, I don't know, Keep. Uh, so here's the thing. There is... A, um, what's going to need to happen next soon is... Uh, it is... It's upgrade time. Uh, finally actually putting in an order for new PC parts in fact essentially a new PC because this old one is well it's hanging on and it's done very well but uh, when I'm rocking a 970 and not where near enough RAM <laughs> and an old motherboard and a rapidly f uh, and an over full uh, C drive it's about time <laughs> in fact it's long past time of doing that so I need to do that before I think I want to do that before I do anything else um, so uh, particularly getting stuck into something uh, again like that so uh, I'm going to order, uh, order some parts this week and then hopefully they'll turn up soon enough and then I will start to, we will assemble. Probably, maybe I, maybe I will do a, a PC assembly stream actually, that could be fun. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I, I'm holding off on starting something new until I have that sorted out, which hopefully shouldn't take too long. Um, so we'll just play it by ear up until that point maybe we could play a few um a few smaller spoopy or spoopy adjacent games we also hand the stream probably so okay i know there's been i know there's talk and um you know people have talked about this as well where you you know if i uh, i could keep this machine around uh to do the stream output uh, and vid and put it in <clears throat> and put the new machine in through that and do all that 
that might be more of a hassle than I actually want to bother with. <laughs> um, because I think it would still be fine to run it off the same machine. I think it would still be fine, honestly. Um, yeah. Uh, I might consider doing that, but... Uh, to do that effectively, you would need not just new machine, you would need uh, more <laughs> more power sockets, more peripherals, and more, like, uh, no, I kind of, I don't think I really want to do that. Um, I'll keep the old machine around, maybe in the future I will do something like that, but I think it'll be fine. Yeah, double boxing is a heck of a faff, yeah, exactly. So uh, th this <laughs> can handle single boxing for certain things. So I uh, they will be uh, they will be okay. They will be okay. Yeah. We'll see. Um but yeah, for the my initial plan is to um just do just single box it as they say. Mm, spooky game. Crow Country. Uh, oh yeah, I've seen a few clips of this. This is like a sort of... The year is 1990. It's two years since the disappearance of Edward Crow and the abrupt closure of his theme park. I have to admit, I'm kind of I'm kind of over theme park horror. Um, but let's see. What do people say? What do people say? Mm. 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 Short, sweet, to the point, cozy, charming, Silent Hill, Resident Evil like horror game. Puzzles aren't too difficult. The game has enough, enough nice quality of life mechanics and to hint how to continue. That sounds. Uh, I mean, like the sound of that. All right, let me let me put it on on the list. Hold on a second. Crow Country. Two to four? Alright. There is a demo as well. Alright, wishlist it. Hollow body. Ooh. Let's have a look at that. Might lean too spoopy. Yeah, I don't I don't normally go in for super spoopy games anyway, but if I'm looking for a few bits and pieces to play while I uh, before before we switch to the new machine, then a few spoopy games maybe is okay. A tech noir survival horror story. Why all survival horror? Ah, set in the urban decay of a long abandoned British city. Hmm. <laughs> I see. Hmm. Hmm. Well, uh, maybe. Ah. RE2 remake, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> people crave the PS1 <laughs> 2 survival horror golden age, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Uh. Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> that might that might lean too spoopy. <laughs> too spoopy for me. Oh. Is doing anything on the store at the moment? No. Okay. Oh. What? Uh, Signalis, I let's have a look. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I've seen this one. Yes, 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 yes. Classic survival horror experience. Oh. Unravel a cosmic mystery. Ooh. All right. Wish list that. Put it on the list. Endoparasitic. What's this one? Ugh. 
Ah. Three limbs ripped off, infected with a deadly parasite, you must survive. Oh, good. <laughs> Probably a real bad stream game. Mm, maybe. Who knows? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, like I said, hopefully I will get an, the new PC set up soon, and we can we can. I think what's going to take longer than actually building it is <laughs> migrating all the files that I have, but and getting it set up the way I want it. But yeah, that's that's what we're going to have to do. Our games are great even at their peak, except for seven. They're not. I was gonna say, not exceptionally scary. Yeah, seven. Seven is straight up a horror horror game. Like, this is, no, no, <laughs> not playing seven. Yeah, RE2 remake maybe. My is that on? That's yeah, I can get on. Yes, hold on. RE2 remake. Mm, Resident e Resident. Evil. Mm. Yeah, I'd pick that up. I, I would pick that up on PS4, yeah. Then we could stream it, uh, stream it reliably. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I will... I will consider that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Actually, you know, I haven't looked at my wish list in a while. Well, is there anything on there I can get rid of? Like, I don't. Eh, I mean, sure, whatever. Eh, it's fine. Oh. Hmm. But yeah. Every time, every time it's sort of like spooky games comes around. Could do some sp oh, maybe, maybe, maybe. Hmm. <laughs> Lethal Company wave get into that way too late. Yeah. I, I'm uh, something that uh, that uh, is a bit frustrating and it's just disappointing is how short a half life those kind of games seem to have. In the sort of popularity because it's like oh you missed the boat on lethal company it was like it lasted for like two months <laughs> like uh, now nobody cares which is like that's never stopped me from streaming a game before but it's just <laughs> it feels like i had a very short heyday for no good reason well i mean the reason being um, something else, uh, something else came along, and was then the game du jour of the. <laughs> mm. Well, you know what I did see actually. What was um, what was that game called? Um, Buckshot Roulette was a kind of scary esque, um, kind of give me inscription vibes. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so a few people playing that one. Hmm. <laughs> that might be, I might be, I'll put it, I'll put it on the list. Uh, oh, I mean, it's like, it's so cheap. What the hell? It's like, okay, I'll put it on, I'll, I'll put it on the list. I might actually just pick it up because it's like, what is it? It's, <laughs> it's two pound 50. Like what? <laughs> I divine cybermancy. You what? Is it, how, is it horror? 
In a dark cyberpunk world, you and up to three friends wage war against the all-powerful Federation. The source-powered FPS RPG. Yeah, I mean, maybe. It looks very horror adjacent. It was very, you know. <laughs> someone's, yeah, someone's 40k fanfic. It does. Ah, sea budget game tries to do way too much. This combination is very appealing to a specific person. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Steam is having a turn-based RPG fest. That's what they're doing. I was like, what is this on graphic on the on the store page? And that's what it is. Uh, uh, mm. This is not not spooky games, but <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Still not discounted. I mean, yeah, I don't expect it to get discounted necessarily anytime soon. Yeah, horror game horror games are very much like not my speed most of the time. Um but something something like that. Something kinda spooky would be <laughs> Would be good. Ah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Don't go above ten to fifteen percent off until your sales plateau. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, control control is spooky vibes, but we put, I mean we played control on the stream uh quite quite a while ago, but we did play it and I did really enjoy it. So yeah. Ah uh, Out did Outlaws flop? Ah, uh, that's a shame. I mean, I guess. Oh, wait, hold on, was that an EA game or a Ubisoft? Oh, it was a Ubisoft game. Alright, never mind. Not a shame. <laughs> Doesn't matter. No, I take it back. <laughs> ah. It's surprising that a Star Wars game flopped, I guess. Well, or is it? I don't know. It's less surprising that a Ubisoft game flopped, but you know. Oh, randomly forced stealth sections. Everybody loves randomly forced stealth sections. They're the best. I love that. Oh no, instant fail. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> my favorite, the instant fail. Uh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Ubisoft is Ubisoft. Like, they're still doing the same shit they've been doing. You know. Oh, I didn't play. I haven't played one, but I, it's been on my list. Ghost of Tsushima. I should. I. I should play it at some point. Yeah. I did see Ghost of Tsushima two got announced. God, what is it? Ghost of um, Yote. Um, starring Erika Ishii, which is very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I should play Tsushima. Mm. It's not a horror game, is it? <laughs> Can I justify that <laughs> for October? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Watch Dogs Two is still probably the best version of a of a Ubisoft game. <laughs> yeah, multiplayer has some horror themes. Hmm. <laughs> Perhaps. I'll have to think about that. <laughs> Is it PlayStation Classic? It might be. Ah. Is it 20 quid price tag? Yeah, I think so. I think I got it. I, I'm trying to remember if I... 
I might have bought it on sale on, on, P on PS4 or something. I think. I'll have to check. I'll have to double check. I, I have a vague memory of picking some picking up when it was super cheap and then never playing it. <laughs> I think I did that. It was it was a long time ago if I did, but <laughs> <coughs> I have to check that out. Yeah. Yeah, we we just continue in the we continue the uh <coughs> continue the weeb phase and go play Ghost of Tsushima. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, um, <clears throat> that was, so I know Ghost, I know, um, Ghost of Yote is, um, being, uh, is set in like 1600, um, which just made me think, it's like, ah, or around about that time. It's like, ah, early 1600s Japan, so hot right now. Yeah, post Sengoku period. I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> I did really enjoy uh, Shogun. <laughs> uh, but Ghost, I think, is set uh, is like several hundred years before that. Which, <laughs> yeah, Tsushima is set in the 1300s during the Mongol invasion. Ah, it's intentionally anachronistic, right? Yeah, but I saw, saw the be like, wait, so they killed off the main character for the sequel? It's like, no, it's like it's like three hundred years later. Like, oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, it's been like discourse that made that that filtered through. It was people. It was again like the usual reactionary idiot chuds being mad at the Erika Ishii is the main character, which is like. Although my favorite thing, my favorite thing I saw <laughs> related to that was people say like, you know, there was one tweet or post or something that was like, Erica, something like Erica Ishii is woke and unhinged and <laughs> everyone being like, well, yes, woke and unhinged brackets affectionate, <laughs> like, don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> like, Yeah. Yes, and yes, we should give Erica a Gundam. Yeah, I was already interested. You don't have to sell me on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, they're playing a character. Uh, whatever. It's, yeah. There's no point trying to reason like with, yeah, with uh, with reactionary bigots like that. Like trying to be mad about it is like uh, don't bother trying to construct an argument against it. They're just just bigoted idiots. It's like, uh, but yes, <laughs> give Erica a Gundam. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I've only I haven't watched the 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 show that's from, but I have se I've seen that image of um of of them standing there in front of the screen that says, "You should let me have a Gundam," which is it's like, mm, yes, good point. Mm. Yeah, I have. I've heard many, many good things about Ghost of uh, Tsushima. So maybe how how long does it take? Next one. <laughs> if you were making beam from the cover of GPS. You find I mean that's just the it's just the standard way to do it, but wait, how does how does Ghost of Tsushima do it then? Oh it's not that long. Main story is like 25 hours, main and sides is like 46 hours. Completionist is like 62. I mean, yeah, that's not that long. You follow the wind. Oh that's nice. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's cool. It's not quite the same, but I remember playing Witcher 3 and for a little bit just turning off all of the overlay and then only allowing myself to use to navigate by pulling up the map 
and try and figuring out where I was. And I remember that was that was interesting. Yeah, that was neat. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, maybe maybe it's time. Uh, here's, here's the thing that is going to happen. Like, okay, here's what happens when we get to October and also just the way that my brain works. Um, because I know there's going to be some, dis like, we've got October and then it's the beginning of November and we know what happens in the beginning of November. <laughs> So it's around this time where I'm like, oh, well, if I, I'm, I'm going to get stuck into something like another um, another Final Fantasy game. I, I want to wait um, <coughs> until after that uh, because there'll be a lot of stuff to do beforehand. There'll be, you know, there'll be... I uh, have certain other things I'll need to do. Um, <clears throat> so, finding something to take us through uh, October would be would be good. And that could be Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, I, I mean, what we could do, I suppose I could do Ghost of Tsushima and then some bonus spoopy games if I want to do. Yeah. No, I, I just looked that up, Lamb, yeah. Bonus spoopy games if we want to do that uh, uh, around Halloween time, maybe that might that might not be a bad idea actually. <clears throat> yeah. Yes. Oh, there's also an expansion. Oh. <laughs> and director's cut and all, all of that stuff. Ooh, excuse me. Sorry. Oh, dear. Oh, PS5 PC exclusive stuff. Ah, okay. Never mind that. Forget about that. <laughs> hmm. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. Mm. Oh yes, dubbed Japanese dubbed or full Kurosawa. Yeah, yeah. Black and white Japanese dubbed, yes. Yes, I remember hearing about that. Hmm. I mean, okay, dubs or subs? Well, we gotta go. <clears throat> I don't know. I feel like I want, I want the su subs. You know, Japanese, uh, Japanese audio, uh, English subtitles. Hmm. That's the way to go. Yeah, exactly. Do the dub. That's usually why I go with dubs because uh, that's how it was made. <laughs> But you know, some, 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 uh, sorry, not dub, so, ah, wait, English dub, wow. Yes, however it was made, this is the way it was made in, ah, whatever. <clears throat> yeah, that's weird. Why wouldn't you have lip syncing for the Japanese version? Ah, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, don't worry about that. Worry about that later. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, man. Next on the list for um, I go. Got to figure out how. To, got to figure out doing um. Final Fantasy Eleven as well. With everything else, I'm got. There's going to be happening during this month. I'm like, you know what? I also don't want to figure that out right now. <laughs> uh, it's funny how the brain works because I'm like, okay, it's. October, so I don't have time to get started on something because then it's going to be November where we're going to have 
desert bus and then following that it's going to go into holidays and and uh christmas so i basically basically we're done like uh, we're done for the year you know <laughs> that's how my brain is like ah it's october the year's over <laughs> we've got no time to do anything it's like that's not that's not true that's not <laughs> that's wrong <laughs> Uh, it's like, ah, it's October, which means it's almost November, which means it's almost December, which means, ah! Yeah, I cannot do anything, I have an appointment in six hours, yes, but scaled up to the rest of the year. That's that's how it works. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm. <laughs> but, nah, it should be alright. Be able to fit we'll be able to fit some stuff in my main thing that i do want to get sorted out is i do want to assemble this new pc by the end of the month um and get it set up the way i wanted it to i uh, want want it to be like that's that's what i want <laughs> anything else uh whatever <laughs> i would like to be able to use this new pc for desert bus because <laughs> uh, i worry about trying to watch desert bus mod desert bus use slack and do all of that with this pc the way it is at the moment where it keeps yelling at me that it doesn't have enough space and that it's running low on like it's it keeps trying to, uh, and among yeah other things <laughs> yeah it has served me well but it's 10 years old graphics card is like not is like eight or nine years old and um yeah it's just it's just underpowered old and starting to hit its limit but i've squeezed squeezed all the um oh i do that already yeah i i did i do that already lamb at least i think so Use use the folders for different hardware. Yeah, I believe I do that already. I'll, I might look into that. <laughs> Just as another way to try and because it only it only lasts for a certain like it's like okay I've saved a bit of space, but then it just keeps creeping up and up and up and up. So, yeah. Uh, the thing I'm gonna have to set up is like when we um when I do get there and I've got the new. <clears throat> hard drive yeah i mean i'm looking at i'm, I'm basically going with the um the enthusiast build that uh, we talked about before and what do, what does that have <laughs> what does that have for hard drives uh which one is that yeah two terabyte ssd yes That, that should be good. <laughs> that should be alright. Um, among, yeah, plenty of other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm moving over your drive from the old computer. I might be doing, I don't know, I maybe do that. Not sure. Uh, it's one of the things I'm going to have to figure out um, because I have the two drives in this machine are a 50 gig SSD, which is the boot drive, the C drive, and just saying the phrase 50 gig SSD, you can already see where the problem is. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's a one terabyte. I think it's one terabyte uh, magnetic drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You see the problem? You see the problem I'm having, Lamb? You see the problem here? <laughs> yeah, you see the problem, don't you? <laughs> yeah, look, it was good in 2013. <laughs> well, it was all right in 2013. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you start to see the issue. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I'm running on like I'm running on like less than a gigabyte of free space, my dude. <laughs> it's it's not good. It's not good. Like the magnetic the 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 storage drive has like ninety plus gigs of it's like ninety to one hundred and twenty, depending on what I what I have installed uh, of free space at the moment. But the boot drive is. <laughs> <laughs> Almost completely full. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not good. <laughs> so yeah, I would move over the st I would maybe move over the storage drive because that is where a lot of I mean that's where a lot of storage is. But uh, I could I could install that to the new machine and just keep it there or transfer everything you know off there. <clears throat> that 50, not worth it. <laughs> uh, the only things installed to there are, well, there are a few useful programs because I installed them there um, ages ago and I never moved them, but I, would, I don't want to try moving them now because it'll just break a lot of stuff. Um, <clears throat> like like uh, web browser. Hmm. Yeah. Well, the one terabyte um, magnetic drive for storage is probably worth uh, that. That one is worth moving. That one, that one, I can I can make some make use of that one maybe. <clears throat> Partition that one into 500, 1500. Yeah, I'll figure this out when we when we go and use the five hundred for the OS. Yeah, that would make sense. This is why I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna need some some help for setup when when we do get here because um, it's been a long time since I've set up a PC and um, built you know and so on so that's partly why I wanted to do a stream I'm like okay let's set this up let's get this sorted um, but yeah I'm gonna order the parts uh, within the next couple of days and then we will. Assemble! Yeah. How much of it can I order through Amazon? <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to worry about that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will, uh, yeah. There is, uh, yeah. There's some stuff I want to keep on there, there's some stuff, whatever. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a lot more time of actually setting it up to run the way I want it to and installing all the stuff that I need. But it needs to happen. It really does. <laughs> it really does need to happen. I can't keep can't keep running around with this this machine as good as it has been. But I had to, I I now since I'm now sorting out the new the new one um i, I <laughs> i've paused windows updates because it keeps being like try oh we're trying to update and i can't update um and um you know clear some space and like i i have cleared all the space i can i i i've been through everything i've taken out everything that i possibly can you know that isn't gonna break stuff. That isn't gonna, you know, you know. I I can't I can't do I can't. There's no more. There's no more room. I can't do it. Uh. So yeah. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I'm afraid we've hit the limit here. Yeah. But yes, tis time, and yeah, it's also for. Well, I mean, yeah, that's that's the that's the main thing. It was definitely getting in the way of like <laughs> trying to stream and game at the same time on the same machine was worked for some things, but not for a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, it just gets in the way of doing. As games continue to get bigger, you know, we're playing through a lot of Final Fantasy right now, so that's fine. You know, a lot of the old Final Fantasies, that's, that's still okay, and we can do that on PS4, but 
I'm thinking about the future and I'm like, okay, well, what else do I want to do? And what else is going to get harder and harder? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We'll keep it around. There's not much value in selling it off, really. Uh, and I'll keep it around in a box to be like, maybe we'll do something with this in the future. Like, my immediate plans, though, is I'm not going to go. I don't, yeah, I don't want to try and figure out dual boxing it or whatever. That just sounds like a real pain in the ass. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but I'll keep it around and see if there's something I want to do with it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> keep it around as a warning to others. <laughs> yeah, who knows? Mm. Yeah, but well, come to this this build. I mean, we'll have a much beefier, much beefier graphics card, much beefier graphics card actually. <laughs> Uh, and you know a lot more RAM you can download more RAM that's the main thing uh, <laughs> so yeah hmm <laughs> yeah that that should have covered for for a while yeah that's the thing. That's mainly what I want. I was like, I, I don't want to have to upgrade this in like three years. <laughs> I, but knowing me, I wouldn't anyway. Even if I had to, I would just be like, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I, I am not gonna spend money to upgrade unless I absolutely have to. <laughs> Which is like, that's why it's taken so long to get to this point. Because I'm like, oh no, I, I could I could get some more use out of this. I, I could, you know, I could get some more use out of this. I could I could, you know, it's still it's still fine. It's it's still fine. It's, uh, oh no, it's not. No, it's not anymore. <laughs> it's and I want to sort this out before it you know something goes even more wrong with it. You know, and so it's like ah uh, yeah, it, it is it is it is time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. mm. Yes, the AMD chips with yeah, because they don't switch sockets. That'll be good. Yeah, that'll be good. And also, they won't just randomly break like the <laughs> the um, Intel chips have been recently. I mean, whatever. It's, it's, it's as long as it works. It works. You know. <laughs> yeah, they won't randomly burn themselves out. For no reason. Yeah. I love also I love tech names because they're so ridiculous sometimes. Like the the yeah, like the the um the, the RAM is like uh XPG Lancer Blade. So it's fucking it's RAM. Yeah, Photonic Accelerator. The Jetstream G Force, whatever. The um, thermal right phantom spirit is the CPU cooler, which is just stupid, but I love it. It's very funny. And then the the and then like the motherboard is like it's a it's a it's it's just a bunch of like uh, serial numbers or whatever because they know that nobody is like. No, no one is uh, excited about buying a motherboard. You know, it's like <laughs> advertised to like we're still seven years old. Yeah, the sad part being that like that works. Like it, it does actually work. <laughs> that's, that's why they do it. A Gundam. Yeah, Thermal Right Phantom Spirit does sound like a Gundam actually. But yeah, you can tell the, the like the power supply, and the um and the motherboard and the processor. Well, the processor is like Ryzen, but that's not really you know, Ryzen Thunderblade Shadow Strike Raid Shadow Legends whatever. But like <laughs> the purely functional things that you kind of need to have, 
you know, like the motherboard and the power supply are just like, it's the this model number. <laughs> like, yeah. No. Must be like the. They don't. They don't have like RGB lights on them. Although maybe they should. Maybe they should. <laughs> Rising and Zen. Why? It's a. It's a processor. Whatever. Whatever. I'm just like the Zen architecture. I mean, sure. Uh, whatever. Mm. <laughs> ah, yeah, I was looking up gaming mice because I know some of these have stupid names like the Razor Death Adder. It's a mouse. Oh, so many gaming mice are just absolutely hideous to look at. Oh yeah, the, oh yeah, Razor is king. Of, yeah, okay, Razor. What has it got? The um, the Death Adder, the Basilisk. What else is in here? Oh, the Logitech Hyperion Fury <laughs> Wired Gaming Mouse. Uh. Oh, some of them are just hideous. With like, they they look like they look like a can of Monster Energy drink. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah, we'll be getting a new mouse as well because this one is old and busted and needs replacing too. Yeah, I know Steel Series is pretty good. Yeah. Uh. Like, why does that have? Oh yeah, there's like the red drag. There's ones with all the programmable buttons on the side, and and yeah. You can go in some very silly places. Yeah, MMO mice, yeah. We'll find it. Let me just hold on. Yeah, let's get a picture of this. Hold on. Like <laughs> There's all the you've got a phone number you got a number pad on the on the left hand side there. <laughs> and I'm not sure what the the I'm not sure what's on the bottom left there. Weights probably to weight it differently, I guess. But it it looks like a um looks like a revolver chamber, you know. <laughs> all right, reload your mouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. But like, oh god, yeah. I don't know why, it's just so much of the sort of peripherals. Uh, thing is as well, like, i got to stop looking at too many peripherals because, oh yeah. Zalman FPS gun, oh no. Is that a gun-shaped mouse? Yes it is, yes it is. Ah! Stop it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a mouse with a, like an upside down gun grip. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, hold on a second. An ergonomic gaming mouse. There it is. The FPS gun. <laughs> All right. You just sort of. <laughs> it looks like a um. 
Oh, it looks like a, a, a woodworking tool, actually. It looks like a, a planer where you go, you know, <laughs> or sanding bits off of, a, off of a log or something. <laughs> that is a pricing gun. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen I've seen weirder looking ergonomic mice. To be fair, and there's the three D mouse as well, or three D mice. Oh yeah, here we are. Yeah, Space Pilot Pro Professional 3D Mouse, which looks like the center console of a uh, of a of a modern car. Like, <laughs> that's what that's you know. <laughs> like this looks like it should have a button. This is like it should have a button to open, like open the, the uh, open the passenger door or something. You know, <laughs> roll the windows down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it's a it's a three D mouse. This is the sort of mouse bit in the middle. <laughs> Yep. Micro keyboards have not. Not like the you know like the the normal like the like the sixty percent keyboard or whatever it is. <laughs> Tactical assault commander. Fine. <laughs> Tactical assault commander. Okay. Hold on. Can I get? Ah. Wait, what? Is this, is this, why does this look like it's purely for playing Final Fantasy XIV? Like, this is just for your hop keys or whatever. Like, oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's got a thumbstick or whatever that, yeah. I love that the 14 is actually XIV, yeah. So yeah, this this surely has to be just for playing Final Fantasy fourteen, or MMOs or whatever. Because <laughs> it's just yeah, yeah. The buttons you'd use around your one has plus thumbstick, yeah. <laughs> All right, that's one way to do it. <clears throat> The thing I have to not look at is like, well, maybe I want a new keyboard as well, because again, this one is old and crusty. Um, <clears throat> but again, you can add this stuff up very quickly. I don't need a new keyboard. Mouse, I kind of do, because the middle click keeps breaking on it. I'm, try I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep my budget down to a number I set, and the more stuff, it's like, oh god, no. I'm, try I'm trying to keep it down. And as soon as you look at a mechanical keyboard, your <laughs> budget just goes whoosh, gone. But like this one has a bunch of it is a bunch of uh, it's gonna maybe it looks a bit gross, but you can see it's got a bunch of like extra space around it. You know, it's 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 too big, <laughs> and I have that has kind of annoyed me before. It's got like a lot of, you know, but I, I'm not. I, I don't know. I don't want to. If I was going to do that, I don't think I want one of the sh small ones. Um, I want a number pad. Damn it. Yeah, full size.
Give me that full size keyboard, damn it. <laughs> Number pad. Keychron, eh? As soon as you start looking into this stuff, it's, it's just, uh, uh, how, how, what's the damage? Uh, oh no. <laughs> you look at a website and you're like, oh no, this will be too much. Space Cadet keyboard. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. We have to, we have to take a look at this on screen. So we've got you know macro terminal quote overstrike clear input clear screen hold output stop output uh, abort break resume call. We got you know thumbs up thumbs down left right. Um, <laughs> shift. Greek, there's a button for Greek. Uh, control, meta, top, repeat, alt, lock, super, hyper. Uh, tab, network, the caps lock, mode lock. Uh, oh yes, and there's the button to rub out. Yep. Another Greek button, can't have too many of those. <laughs> Shift. <laughs> Why does it say rub out? Wait, uh, what is that one? Greek button is a modifier. Ah. Ooh. 8 bit retro. Rub out is backspace, of course. This makes sense. 8 bit, oh, retro style. Oh, I see. It looks like an NES control. <laughs> ah, uh, yeah, this is going to be a. Yeah. See, where does it get to the point? I, I get worried when you look at the sort of like, you know, product page like this. It's like, how how long is it before you get to the price? And if it's a really long time, you know it's not going to be good. <laughs> it's like, oh no. Like, if I go to Amazon UK. Oh, it's not that bad, actually. Okay, it's like 90 quid, which is expensive for a keyboard. But, um, I don't know, probably still more than I would want to pay. <laughs> it does come with two big programmable buttons. Yeah, it's cheap for a mechanical keyboard. Yeah, maybe. It's not even full size. Get out of here. <laughs> oh, they also have a um, Famicom version. And uh, there's, a <laughs> there's a ZX Spectrum version, I think. Yeah, separate numpad. No, I do not want... I don't want a separate numpad. No. Damn it, give me the full-size keyboard. I know, I know why, I, I, yeah. I know why people want the, the smaller keyboard <clears throat> and don't have much use for the number pad. But I, I want it. <laughs> Just a two button mouse. <laughs> An NES style mouse, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> this is the thing with a <clears throat> with a separate uh, with a separate numpad, you have to plug this is just too many, too many separate peripheral things. Mm. Normal profile. Ah. <laughs> Wireless. Yeah, I mean, there's there's options. I don't know. The new keyboard is not something that I need, but. <clears throat> Would be nice. <laughs> Would be nice. Uh, yeah. 
What are you? Two, you're a tank style mouse. <laughs> Modern retro gaming. Glide pads for smooth. Ah, yeah. It's just, this just looks like, yeah. <laughs> retro modern. It's just a brick. It's just, that's what it is. It's just this. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> it almost looks like a bar of soap, actually. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, Amiga. <laughs> Noise. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so many shiny keyboards. I cannot possibly possess them all. <laughs> Yeah. All right, well, anyway, <laughs> never mind all that. But yeah, it's upgrade time, baby. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, at uh, at some point in the future, we'll have there may be some disruption to stream. Maybe I hope I'll try. I'm gonna try and avoid it. But as we try to, as we swap from the old and busted machine to the new hotness. And like I said, I might do a, might just do a PC building stream because why not? <coughs> do a, a let's build stream, but it's building a PC <laughs> instead of a Gumpler. Yeah, it shouldn't take too long. Yeah, that's the thing. It shouldn't take too long to get everything running unless something goes wrong. And I, I have, uh, uh, <laughs> I worry. I worry about all of this stuff, you know. Anyway. Yeah. All right. It is, what is it, 10 past 8? I think it's probably a good time for me to call things for today. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, oh, there we go. Crunch. Ah, there we go. Good game. Mm. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, yeah. <clears throat> I will be back next week uh, with something. Maybe, maybe, probably, probably, probably Ghost of Tsushima. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look into that as well. Uh, we'll have some video games next week. That's for sure. Ah. Uh, yeah. In the meantime, hope everyone has a good rest of their day. Uh, yeah, I will leave you for now. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go get some food. So don't forget, vods, socials, and the hats chat. Discord. All the good links there. Uh, I will see you next time. Thanks for hanging out and chatting. Having a nice chill time today. I will uh, I will see you soon. Bye.